is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony and today it has been a long day already woke up at the crack of dawn not even the crack of dawn 4 30 a.m drove to Cervini's in new jersey stopped there they took off the rear valises and i told you guys about that before i actually just borrowed them they were a prototype they're going to now put them into production so i know everyone has been asking about them they are now fully going into production for all of you guys to purchase but that is not what this video is about today it has been officially one year since i've purchased stangosaurus at this point so feel free to put it in the comments section a little happy birthday for stangosaurus but Today, having said that, I am here for my annual inspection. That is one of those things we have to do here in Pennsylvania. Once a year, we have to get the car inspected. We basically find out how it's doing, I guess, and uh, hopefully everything checks out okay. But for that reason, this video is going to be the one-year review of my 2019 Ford Mustang GT. I'm going to go over the exterior, the interior, the driving dynamics, and also we're going to see how it does on inspection here. And hopefully it passes, and I'll, of course, let you guys know if it needed anything after after a year and 6,000 ish miles so and so what do you say let's actually start this video with the inspection portion it is sitting at Bob Ruth Ford in Dillsburg PA here ready to be taken back so let's go ahead and give them a little bit of time here and once the car comes back out I'll, I'll let you know how it does all right you guys so inspection is done as expected after one year of ownership and 6,000 miles Everything has come back squeaky clean. Not a single thing needs updated or replaced or fixed or anything like that. So one year down, perfect record. Now I got my inspection good for another year. So until next year, but let's go ahead and jump into the exterior portion of this review. And so if you guys remember the one thing, actually two things, as far as fitment goes, there was a little bit of a gap on this side of the headlight. And honestly, that kind of doesn't bother me anymore so not a big deal it's just from you know reviewing other cars a lot of other manufacturers don't have it but you really can't really notice it all that much i think that was just me being picky the one major thing was the hood the hood on this side actually didn't line up with the front part of the fender there but again that problem has been alleviated i do now have a cervini hood anyways so that has kind of fixed that problem for me but um Talking to other Mustang owners, most other Mustangs didn't have it. I would probably say like maybe 10 to 20% of them did, mine did. So like I said, that has been fixed now, so not a big deal. But other than that, definitely love the look of the Mustang. Going around to the side a little bit, one of the best parts about the Mustang, comparatively speaking to like the Camaro and the Challenger is they actually, Ford actually brings the back down. Whereas with the Challenger and Camaro, they kind of like, they leave it up a little bit. So I like the old school fastback type of design where they actually bring the back down a good bit. So that's one of the main reasons I do like the design. Some people will say the side mirrors are a little bit small, but then again, I just got done driving five and a half hours this morning in Stegosaurus and I was perfectly fine. I actually do use, there's a, let me show you guys real quick. There's actually a little blind spot mirror right up there. I use that quite often. So really there's no issues with the side mirrors, at least in my opinion, but making our way to the back, of course, I replaced my performance pack level one rear spoiler with the Cervini. But anyways, this isn't a modification video. This is just a stock Mustang video. One thing I really do like are the LED sequential taillights. Let me show those to you guys real quick. It kind of makes it look like the lights are sliding from one side to the other. And just below it all, there is a massive rear diffuser. And 2018-2019 Mustang exhaust does come with quad tips. Although I did not go with the active exhaust system from the factory because I knew I was gonna be modifying it anyways. And that was one of the main reasons for that. But speaking of, let me touch on the specs. The way I spec'd my car out was I did go with the 301A package primarily because I wanted the Sync 3 system and the better sound system as well. So that has definitely not been a regret. I love that package. Package. Also performance pack level one, not for the wheel and tire combination, because as you guys can see, I swapped them out anyways, but more so because I wanted the larger brake setup. It does come with, let me show you real quick, does come with Brembo six piston front calipers and a larger rotor setup in the front and the back. So that is one of the main reasons I went with the performance pack level one, but, and there's gonna be some other stuff like a larger radiator, a couple other suspension components, but all in all, definitely no regrets with the performance pack level one package either. 
perhaps my only regret you guys here it is Magnaride damping suspension that is one thing I wish I would have gotten on this and of course I made it worse because I upsized the wheels to 20 inches and put some Eibach lowering springs so that didn't help the ride at all but with that Magnaride damping system it does really give you the best of both worlds it makes it a smoother ride because it monitors each shock absorber individually it does give you a smoother ride but it also firms up the suspension during heavy cornering as well so I do wish I would have gotten that just for the sake really of having a smoother ride so anyways that is my one regret and let's go ahead and make our way to the interior now real quick i'll give you what i like and dislike about the interior of the mustang all right so first let me get this out of the way with some other muscle cars sometimes visibility is not going to be the best but with the mustang it is perfectly fine visibility is great in the mustang so please do not be worried about that that is my sync 3 system that i was previously telling you guys about that was the 301a package that came with and definitely one of my favorite parts just because you can like and dislike your pandora songs you have free navigation through that as well and it's super easy to use still super responsive there's no delay to it sometimes with other manufacturers there can be a delay but so far so good as far as the sync 3 goes also like my little paddle shifters as well there i've used them plenty of times although if you put it in that sport plus driving mode you really don't need them anyways because that driving mode downshifts and upshifts absolutely perfectly also definitely a fan of the 10 speed automatic i was a little bit back and forth whether i wanted the six speed or the 10 speed but at the time the six speed was having a lot of shift fork issues i also if i wanted to go six speed i would have went with the tremec rather than an mt82 but ultimately i am perfectly happy with the 10 speed automatic and by the way the 10 speed automatic is faster than the six speed anyways ford says with that 10 speed automatic performance pack level one the ford mustang gt will do 60 in 3.9 seconds so although i haven't been able to replicate that yet my quickest has been 4.7 on the street though i'm sure they did it on a drag track but still definitely a beast of a car to drive but i will get into the performance in a little bit i'll give you guys an exhaust clip all that fun stuff as far as the seats go excuse all my stuff here seats are actually pretty darn comfortable i gotta admit like i said to you guys i took a two hour and 45 minute drive to new jersey this morning and two and a half hour drive back and yeah, I definitely had no issues with the seats being uncomfortable or anything like that. So definitely no issues there either. As far as the back seat goes, I don't use it. I don't think many people do use it. There isn't a whole lot of space back there for legroom, but I will say I have folded it down plenty of times to put my dog back there or some car parts or whatever but, but all in all interior quality for me i gotta say is just fine the would have been kind of cool to have that digital dash as an option but i don't really mind this setup although the digital dash is a bit cooler but it is a bit more expensive as well and anywho let me flip the camera around let's do a little driving segment and exhaust clip here one of the best parts about the mustang so i guess it goes without saying when it comes to performance the acceleration is most definitely my favorite part about this car 460 horsepower again capable of 60 in 3.9 seconds sub four seconds zero to 60 that's awesome and of course in that sport plus driving mode i got it in you guys hear those downshifts another one of the things i absolutely love about the mustang coming up to a red light here braking is definitely on point i think it was in 2016 when i first drove the mustang gt where i realized that the brembo six piston front calipers and the rotors and everything the whole braking setup was absolutely amazing i think it was then the 2016 model year i think it was that particular mustang i test drove i told myself i am going to get a mustang at some point and here i am in 2019 three years later but still my point is braking is definitely equally impressive and although i'm just sitting here right now there is a selectable steering mode button just to the left of the drive mode button that actually gives you comfort normal and sport and i never take it out of that sport driving mode reason being is because it does provide a heavier weight to the steering wheel in my opinion it points you in the direction that you want to go a little bit better but if you weren't a fan of the heavier weighted steering wheel you do have that comfort steering mode as well so that's going to be there for you but the sport is definitely where it's at when it comes to the steering feel but again as far as ride quality goes it could be better with the magna ride damping suspension as i was saying that is what i should have gone with but still i have been driving a heck of a lot this morning for hours it is kind of one of those things where it is as expected for a car like this however you can get it better if you wanted it so that's all i'm saying if you got the money for it spend the extra two grand or whatever it is and go ahead and go with that magna ride damping suspension because in my opinion 
I've driven Mustangs with that as well and it is definitely worth it as far as ride quality goes at least. And I'm sure for handling it's gonna be the same thing as it claims to be, so. But so you guys, I'm feeling adventurous today. Let's go ahead and put it in track mode. Another benefit to the Mustang and all Mustangs actually, even the EcoBoost Mustangs, is it comes with something called track apps. So track apps essentially tests your performance. It gives you zero to 60, 60 to zero, quarter mile times. It actually tracks all of that. So that is how I was saying previously where the fastest time I've gone in the Mustang is 4.7 seconds. That is because that is what track apps has told me when I put it to the test. And so that I think is what we have to do next, you guys. Let's do a quick little zero to 60 run here. See how quickly, see if we can beat our 4.7 zero to 60 time. Because like I said, four claims 3.9 seconds on the track. We're not on a track, so we're gonna slip a little bit more than likely, but let's see if we can at least beat 4.7. You guys ready? with the paddle shifters that time because I was told in the comment section previously that if you let the car shift it's actually going to shift a little bit sooner than it maybe should have so paddle shifters pulled us off in 4.8 that's that's actually pretty cool but so now that we have done that you may have heard I did slide a little bit when I first hit the gas but that is with me spinning and sliding we still hit 60 in 4.8 seconds, so you can imagine. With the right conditions, meaning at a drag strip perhaps, we could possibly hit that zero to 60 in 3.9 seconds, but on a street, meh, I don't know. All right, so last thing when it comes to performance I did want to do for you guys is the exhaust clip. So let me go ahead and find my little park I always go to here. Let's do that exhaust clip. And I will say, again, I don't have the stock exhaust on the car anymore. It did sound good when I had it, but what you will be hearing is the AWE Touring Catback exhaust system if you are interested. But I always have to throw in an exhaust clip in all of my reviews, so I have to do it. Sorry. So, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I do apologize for this. This video is probably a little shorter than it should have been for a review, but I did kind of already review the car once. So I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. So feel free to click that if you wanted the full review of it. But this video is just simply after a year of ownership, just wanted to touch on some of the key points, some of my likes, dislikes. So overall, if you take away anything from this, the car is insanely fun to drive. I'm extremely happy that I got it. No regrets with the purchase. Minus I wish I would have got that Magna Ride damping suspension, but other than that, I absolutely love the Mustang and the train's coming, so I have to go, but I do appreciate you guys watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. Hit the subscribe button, the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay gold.